to EVs this morning. Tesla's seen a bit of weakness overseas with the worst month for EU sales since January of 23. Pretty different picture in China, though. Xpeng driven higher by some strong sales in its latest results. Our next guest does warn that a Chinese monopoly in the EV market could threaten the country's economic security. Joining us here at Post 9 is DVX Venture CEO John McNeil, also a former president at Tesla and presently a board member at GM and Lulu. It's great to have you in, John. Thanks for Hi, coming. Um, what do we make of the EU registrations? Is it telling us something about the market or the company or share or something else? I think it's telling it's, it may be a picture of what's to come because in, EU, in the EU, you've got a lot of competition. Uh, and so really the only EV choice for years in the U.S. has been Tesla. And in the EU, you've got a bunch of alternatives now from all the big makers, and they're gaining share against Tesla. So you see Tesla's registrations down, but EV registrations overall up. So Tesla's losing share right. in that space. Is the difference the competition from China in the EU? There is some competition yes. from China and EU. Clearly, BYD is there in a big way, uh, but it's also the really strong competition from the European makers and the Scandinavian makers, uh, including Volvo. Right. You think it's about price? Uh, it is about price at the lower end of the market for sure, because BYD has these lower price offerings that are really popular, especially in southern Europe in countries like Spain. So what happens now, especially uh, in light of a recent quarterly call where Elon says, if you're in a in the stock for being in the car business, you might want to look elsewhere. He means that. I think he does. Yeah, yeah he's going all chips in on autonomy, uh, and I think he sees that competitive battle coming, and, uh, and the battle may not be EVs in the future, it may be shifting to autonomous vehicles or AVs. Why? why? What happened to the EV future? I think the EV, like, the EV future is alive and well. It's a $70 billion business already in the U.S., uh, and when you combine the EV sales, the new car EV sales, with the used car EV sales in the first quarter, remember, Hertz unloaded tens of thousands of EVs on the market. Used EV sales shot up 45% as a result. And so when you add new and used, you've got significant EV demand. Uh, and that'll shift. It'll rotate back to new car, new EV demand as that uh, one time. You think event so? Because there are questions about whether there are that questions. But when you look, that. like EV demand was up again in, uh, in April, uh, and that doesn't include the used cars. So once the used cars sort of dry up, uh, that, that demand will rotate back to new. Can we ever do EVs like they do in China at the same price point and the same quality? It's really difficult because there's about $28 billion of subsidies into the EV market in China by the government. So free factories, interest-free loans, and very low-cost labor. Uh, and so it gets very difficult to compete at that price level or that cost level uh, from the U.S., which is why it's really important a lot of people believe to protect the U.S. manufacturers from that. There have been a lot of, um, you know, Goldman did a report, I think, just a couple days ago looking at purchase intentions among EV buyers. Yeah. And Tesla is lower than rivals. Why do you think? Is that about price as well? Or do you think there's, there's something cultural going on with the brand? I, there's clearly a lot going on with the brand. Uh, about 80 percent of Tesla sales over the last few years came from very blue zip codes. Uh, and so there's a rotation coming out of that demand, I think, uh, to other makers. So it is, uh, I think it's a, there's a lot of a brand story there. It's somewhat of a price story, but a lot of a brand story. Can you talk about what optionality exists now at GM regarding the ICE business or the EV business? So it's nice at GM to have both options, uh, have the ICE business funding the transition to EV. Uh, and on the EV side, they've got... Uh, 20 uh, EVs in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range, thirty to forty thousand dollar range that are just coming to market literally this month, <laughs> uh, and so now we're going to see a real alternative where after tax incentive you've got a twenty nine thousand dollar five hundred twenty nine thousand five hundred dollar Equinox. It's a really nice car, uh, and a lot of us have been driving it and have fallen in love with it. Uh, it's 310 miles of range for that price. And, and do you think the last question on the charging network in general? Um, does, does Tesla's de-emphasis of that business mean that there's more going to be range anxiety as a result? That was a real head-scratcher of letting that whole team go on a, on a critical piece of Tesla's strategy. Right. But the U.S. and uh, foreign manufacturers have come together to form their own supercharging network called IONA, and they're now rolling out superchargers. So I think you see a shift now in the responsibility from Tesla building that network to now all car companies building that network. Uh, but we've got to get ahead, uh, or at least catch up to demand, uh, so that we can we can offer that mm -hmm. uh, that charging everywhere. Does the industry expect any any changes if we do get a change in the administration after the elections, or a change in Congress? 
uh, given the IRA, given the emphasis from the Biden administration on EVs? There's a lot of, I think, uh, of thought about that and really close watching what's going to happen with the control of Congress and where that may go. I mean, we have, through the IRA, really had a significant movement of bringing the supply chain for EVs over to the U.S. in a way that we weren't able to do as uh, just Tesla alone. Uh, and so that is going to have significant impacts on the industry. So if the IRA gets reversed or walked back at all, does it change GM's strategy? I think we risk losing the auto manufacturing uh, uh, share to China. We really do globally. And so it's a very, it's, it's a bipartisan discussion uh, that ought to be had for sure. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot riding on the auto uh, cycle at the moment. Yeah. Uh, John, help, thanks for helping us understand a little bit more. You bet. Good to have you. You bet. Uh, John, Good to be here.